to Anime Amigos, the show that makes me wonder why am I still here? Because you love us. I don't need to suffer. I'm Calvin Atkinson, the Pokemon Punk. I'm Reese the Gundam Guru. I'm Ren the Jojo Genius. I'm Eric the Vanguard Vagrant. And summer is in the air, the time where us Brits constantly talk about how hot it is outside, check the weather app every five minutes to see how hot it is outside, and proceed to fucking melt because of how hot it is outside. Yeah. We got the best day to be doing this because it's finally started to rain. It's oh, raining, yeah. thank God. The world is healing. Do you, did, you, uh, did you guys just go out this morning and think, Oh, it's nice and not too hot. I'm, I'm yes, I, yes I went outside thinking, yes, it's raining. Fuck, I have to go to Tesco. Go, going to sleep in a 25 degree room with absolutely no possibilities of cooling it is the fucking worst thing in Britain. Absolutely uh, hate it. Meanwhile, I just, I just have a tiny fan on my desk all the time. I've, I've, I've now, I think it's become habitual for me now, is that I have the fan on full blast, but now it's just on one all the time, and it, it's actually very soothing. So, um, I that. so um, we were decided uh, last month, we wanted to to do a berserk thing since the the manga's coming back. Mm-hmm. We weren't quite sure we'd do. Then I had a, a brainwave and I thought, because I thought, well, then the saga's kind of similar. And then I kind of came to the, I don't know if you guys want to come to this conclusion the same as me. I kind of feel like Vinland Saga is the spiritual successor to Berserk. I uh, kind of, I, so I say Berserk is definitely grim dark fantasy, meanwhile, Vinland Saga's historic fiction. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I think probably uh, his spiritual successor is definitely Dark Souls and, and just Souls Bowl <laughs> yeah. games really. It does make you wonder why um, FromSoft have never made a Berserk game. You, yeah. I, I, that is craving uh, to happen. You know, you know though. Actually, I do have. I have recently gotten a game for my PS4 called Berserk and the Banner of the Hawks, mm. which is a Dynasty Warriors clone. Oh yeah. Oh, well, yeah, Dynasty like Warriors would suit this thing. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. the Hundred Warriors. Um, right. How do you, how do you guys all feel about Miura's um, uh, vision sort of going with other writers? I have. I'm actually quite optimistic because it's done by, it's being supervised by a very good friend of his who he actually quite often discussed the story to Berserk with so he knows how it's going to end. Mm. And he's promised to try and bring it as close to Miura's vision as possible because he is a close friend. Mm. So, um, Reese, what are your thoughts on it? Um, well, as long as it's done respectfully and tastefully in line with um, his original vision, then I, I think it could work out. Mr. Wren? I agree, I think it should aspirationally be done in that way, but I also suspect that there's a big money grabbing element to it, so I, mm. I hope it's done I, I don't think so. It's all being done by uh, a manga studio that Mira himself created. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, yeah and yeah. I've seen some of the art from the later chapters, from the latest chapters, it's really fucking good. Oh, really? I, like, it's cl- really close to Miura's artwork. I lo- I lo- also, I, the other thing is, I don't want to live in a world where that doesn't have an ending. It doesn't have a conclusion. If You, you might as well just say, well, there's no... I, at that point, it's like, well, there's no point reading this. Yeah, when you really look at it, Berserk is an inspiration for so many things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a ton of authors over here, even, have talked about how much of an influence Berserk was for them. And musicians, as we know. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Beatles, for one. <laughs> <laughs> the Ita- oh, Ita- Elvis Presley, he loved it. <laughs> and of course, the Ita- the, uh, the gr- one of the greatest bands to ever come out of Italy, The Beast in Black. Are they, Italian? Fuck yeah. Are they Italian? Yeah, they're Italian. I did not know that. Legit, one of my favourite bands of all time. Yeah. Sorry, if, if they're Italian, you're, you're, you're doing the wrong hand movements. The yeah. <laughs> Beast in Black. Oh, sorry. Oh, He's the Beast in Black. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> Racist rant. I'd like to apologise for my for my I- idiots. They w- they will be punished later on Mar- on some sort of Mario my game. My mouth moves before my brain thinks. <laughs> also, the also this is an Italian thing to begin with. What that is? Yeah, it's a, oh. it was um, Italian grandmother. The Dio got it from his Italian grandmother. He did to ward off evil spirits. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's cool. So uh, uh, so um, despite what Gene Simmons claims, Ronnie James Dio did invent it first. <laughs> Technically, his grandmother invented it first. Touche. But uh, it's um, so many people. It's so weird when I always seem to see that's to do with devil worship. But like, no, it's not. It's Catholic. Yeah. Ironically. Um, well, you can argue then that, that a group of metalheads is a religious gathering in that case. Oh. Techni- uh, technically, in the UK, it is. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you uh, though one thing. Um, for uh, to do, with, well, I mean, we've always talked about Vinland Saga quite a bit because yeah. it what it um, was Ren's wild card in 2019 ended up winning our anime Ooh. of the year overall. Yeah, which I I think was probably one of our best choices Agreed. for yeah. it. I've, and incidentally, it's a one time us and Annie Trendings had the same anime of the year. <laughs> um, Ray did 
did Kaguya Sama not win in 2020 for them? I don't think it... Yes, it did. No, I think we got... That's twice in a row we've had. I think 2021 it was different winners. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think it was... Oh, yes, it was the um, Cyberpunk one that we were like... What? Why the hell is everyone... Oh, yeah, Wait, that, that was the uh, anime of the year? Last year, yeah. There was that Cyberpunk one that we didn't really give a shit about. Uh, as, like... a, as, as opposed to Fruit Basket, really? As, as yeah, Fruit Basket came second. As, as Fucking hell. As in the Suicide Squad-esque Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah, that one won anime of the year. At that is surprising. And uh, that, that was like... Oh, that one. I thought you praised that, praised that one a lot. Yeah, but I thought, anime of the year? Mm. Really? Yeah, I know. Um, So, I mean... I think we should. We're obviously going to discuss our thoughts as we go along because we've got five categories to go through on this one. Mm -hmm. But general thoughts on Berserk and Vinland Saga. I'll start with Reese as usual. Well, my only exposure to Berserk was through the original '90s anime, and a few things uh, later on that I saw. So my knowledge is quite light for the uh, the show and the series as a whole. Mm -hmm. But I do enjoy what I've seen. Uh, Elliot, I love the. Uh, I've read the manga. I've read the manga to both of these, and now obviously watch the anime. And this might be a bit biased, but manga-wise, Berserk is my favorite manga of all time. Wow. It is fucking brilliant. Berserk uh, and Ob and Venus Saga as well. Also, just fantastic. Yeah. I think it's is def. It's not quite to the same level as Berserk is, but it's really fucking close. Now, Ren, you've got thoughts on this? Yeah, I've, I've only seen um, I've only seen the anime for both of these. I finished the Berserk anime this morning, <laughs> as usual. Hey. Um, but I've seen Vinland Saga twice through. Uh, yeah. But both, I've got to say, are exceptionally high quality. My, my personal thoughts are now. Interestingly, you remember uh, I, when I was writing my book, I've actually read, watched Berserk for the first time for that one. So, if you want my, so, and I wrote the chapter very soon after. So, I'd say that that chapter of the book is my very initial thoughts on Berserk, but. I remember thinking going into this, I'm not going to get the hype like everyone else, because there's been a few of those where it's really hyped up shows, and I'm kind of like, I'm not sure I'm that into this. And it's like, um, it's I can give you loads of other examples. No Game No Life, I wasn't that into that one. I wasn't into uh, The Devil Was a Part-Timer. We all know my thoughts on Code Geass. <laughs> um, Sold so Online. Sold Online. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't really get into Evangelion, the same thing. Berserk, I completely see the hype. Mm. Berserk really has earned the hype, and I think it's why every and I think everyone who's tried to continue the franchise in anime form, be it the terrible <laughs> Golden Age arc movies, or the or that the, the really bad 3D anime that's come out, they haven't got what made that first season so good. The thing I'm, the thing that's most upsetting is that the CG anime is the only one that actually covers the conviction arc. Like the only one that goes past the golden age. How how, how long is the manga? So I mean, it's currently it's, it's currently forty one volumes. Right, that's not as long as I would have thought. It, it's it's mostly because when you uh, first of all, Miura took a six year hiatus on the series, mm -hmm. and he really takes his time with his art. Like you know how with with a lot of Shonen Jump man manga, they come out every week. Mm -hmm. I think with Berserk, okay, you yeah. get like three chapters a year. No, fair enough. I, I, I'm, I'm um, all for uh, artists working to their own schedule. I'm, I'm wondering, is that going to change now that Miura's not writing and drawing the art? I'm honestly, I'm oh, honestly no. not sure. I, for what I know, the uh, the Fantasia arc, which is currently on, go which is the one that's currently ongoing, uh, is going to is going to end soon, and that's and Miura already had that, all that I think planned out and written down. So what? It's, After that, the next arc, I'm not sure. Is, uh, is Guts going to wear a pointy hat with stars on it now? No, he's, he's <laughs> going to be chopping a broom to bits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's in the public domain. Should, um, we, should we do um, an overview of the series for people who haven't uh, watched uh, it? I've got two quick questions for people that have watched it, actually. On Elliot's front, since he's read the manga. Yeah. One, if you've only seen the 90s an anime... What chapters does it cut? Does the man is part of the manga covered, or volumes of the manga is covered? Is covered by that? Uh, well, I w if you want my full recommendation, I would suggest reading the manga after volume eight, because volume eight is where guts l spoilers. Uh, no, let's let's wait a bit on spoilers. Let's just say the it ending of the show happens at eight. No, a very significant part of the of the show. Of the show happens, which mm. begins downfall of Griffith. Okay, yes. And after that, and after that, it a lot is cut out. Like yeah. a lot, a lot within the sh a lot within the show is cut out. In fact, the Golden Eight, 
In fact, after that bit in the anime, there's like eight episodes left. The Golden Age arc, it goes up to volume 14. Oh, wow. I know, I know what bit you're referring to, and I'm, I was watching it and being like, oh, wow, it's, that, that's changed. <laughs> I do. Yeah, it. It go, yeah. yeah they, they skip over... They skip over quite a lot. Yes. Because yeah. I, I it, it was said that they time skip a full year. Yes, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they do actually yeah. time skip a full year in the manga as well. They ah. just... They miss... They do, they miss a lot of battles essentially. Yeah. I I do like I do like I, I do like the cuts that they made in the anime though. I think the cuts they made in the anime are smart one ones. Do you reckon though it's better There's... to just just read it from the start because they make so many little changes? Yeah, I say read I say read from the start because even in the the Black Swordsman arc which came up which happened before the Golden Age arc, the first the only co- the first, only the first episode covers that. That's a single chapter of the Black Swordsman arc, which continues, I believe, up until the penultimate chapter of Volume Three. Okay. Vinland. Oh, right. Vinland. Oh, well, Vinland is very much the manga. They didn't cut much yeah, of anything. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very long adaptation of the manga. Hmm. Um, incidentally, uh, Vinland's also been a bit in the news recently as well because it's got its second season confirmed. It's going to be done by Mappa this time. Oh. Well, After. Uh, well, uh, they. It's an, the. Final season of Attack on Titan. Oh, okay. I mean, at this, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a defense with this. I don't think Attack on Titan has gone bad because of Mappa. I think yeah. Ma- I think Attack on Titan went bad because the source material went bad. Yeah, but yeah. also, dear God, that animation art style in the final season has been bad. Is it really? Yeah, yeah no, 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 the animation has been, been atrocious. not been nearly as good. Like, for Christ's sakes, oh. Wits did a really good job are, with it. Are we yeah. talking like a decrease in quality from between... Um, uh, fuck, One Punch Man season one and two. I would say yes. Yeah, wow, I'd say about that, that level. Yeah, it's yeah. really bad. Okay. I will at the very least say this. I think the Mappa art style will probably fit Vinland Saga kind of pretty well. I also have heard the creative team behind uh, Vinland Saga is coming to Mappa to do this. Mm. It's yeah. Which I'll be interested because again, um, uh, it's only the higher ups that run these studios. Most of the other workers are like mercenaries going between different studios so on that basis i think it's time to sort of get on and there will be spoilers ahead for both shows so yeah you've yeah. been warned so uh first category is best presentation so we're taking a look at the animation the music and how the art style uh of the anime is and how the art style tra- and you can- and we are going to talk a bit about how the ma- how the um team translated the art style of the manga to the tv show yeah. So well, well, I will say immediately, Berserk loses points. Yeah, because of the um... because there is a lot. Of, first of all, there's a lot of censorship, mm-hmm. not just with nudity, but with the gore. Because pretty much every strike that guts does in the manga, like <laughs> full on cuts in half someone, yeah, which no, is understandable considering how ma- fucking massive his sword is. I, I know. It's you know what it is. It's um. There's a person. There's a great um. It, it's weird for me because that came out in the '90s, and that's the decade where yeah. most of the anime yeah. anime workers are go, anime creators are going. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. No, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. maybe it was like because I think it was 1990s, so maybe it was like just before then. No, the you know, if you see '80s anime, jeez. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really. So yeah, in that case, yeah, I don't really get why like all we got was a few spurs of blood, especially considering the manga. Sorry, the the anime for Berserk is rated 18. Yeah, I mean, for Vinland Saga, it's 50. And that one's yeah. way cooler. Do, do, oh, do, oh well, now I remember. It's got uh, Japanese broadcast standards. Do, uh, do you think it could be um, cost-related if they, if they didn't go into the full depth of animation? Well, it well th- there is obviously a lot of cost uh, that's holding back because there's a lot of still shots in. Yeah. They, they, they use a quite good effect at some time. Yeah, I've, yeah I've, I will say the still, the still shots, I do actually... I do actually like it. I think it's sort of them trying their best to mimic Miura's art style mm. the, because there are a lot of like splash splat shots and like yeah. I'm sure he's all seen the the one of Guts having his arm just have a lot of shot in Griffith. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. so many people have tattoos on. I think the the love scene between um, Guts and Casca as well. That's very effective in that scene. It's yeah, yeah it's done a lot. I'll say now that, that one has done a lot better in the man- in the manga, mostly because we got a very very good bit of character development from Guts that was unfortunately dropped out. So what do you? Um... Well, also the other big difference is 
Berserk was hand drawn. Villain Saga's digital yeah, animation. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 so there is going to be yeah. a difference. And again, there's a there's a nearly twenty year gap, so it's not yeah. entirely fair. So I think we shouldn't say compare. We shouldn't necessarily compare nearly two. Nearly twenty. No, that's like a nearly thirty. Thirty years. years. What year did yeah. Berserk come out again? Sorry. Uh, Nineteen ninety seven. Nine ninety seven. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like nineteen ninety. Oh, no. oh, sorry, twenty. Oh, so yeah, that's neat. It's Nin- over twenty then. My bad. Yeah, yeah twenty. There's a twenty two year gap between these two anime. Yeah. What do you so let's sort of look at what anime was coming out at the time of the and how they compared now? Oh, come on, <laughs> uh, okay. So you're two years off One Piece in Berserk, Neon Genesis Evangelion was out at that point, right? Yeah, even, yeah. I don't That's think Berserk, Gainax, though. I mean, it's hard to do, it's hard to compare anything to Gainax. I don't, I don't, I don't think Berserk, I think Berserk was kind of set to fail a bit, to be honest. Really, so I mean, what, what... in a bit of a way, you can kind of understand that it was trying to adapt the entirety of the Golden Age arc. Which, yeah. even if you cut out the Black Swordsman arc, it's still like 11 volumes. Now, Ren, you were a champion for Vinland Saga. What, um, what are your thoughts about Berserk's animation? What you thought on it? Uh, to be honest, I think, I, I really like it. I think it, it very much fits the 90s aesthetic. And it kind of, it, it's still pretty good today, honestly. I mean, not in terms of frame by frame, like, oh, yeah, that's amazing animation. But I think the overall look, the theme of it, I think it really suits it well. Okay, well, before we move... Uh, Reese, what are your thoughts on these two in particular? Uh, Villain Saga, very fast, fluid movement, probably due to digital animation, mm. help it compared to the slower hand-drawn of Berserk, where it skips all the key frames. Do you, know what, do you know what I think, though? I kind of think on some levels I prefer Berserk, because... Mm. I kind of feel like you you get a lot more sense of the passion when they were all these scenes had to be lovingly drawn yeah. for yeah. every frame. Yeah, because it, it's also really shown in the background, like the forest yeah. and the sky. Boxes. Oh god, the background! Yeah. 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 Was, like, you could tell it was all painted really well. Yeah, yeah. incredible. incredible. Um, the production I think is quite good on both of them. I'd say I should say for, um, with Berserk, we I think we all watched it in dub. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. Which is I watched both in dub. Which is interesting because. Um, uh, well, I'll say in terms of the dub production, I prefer the cast in Berserk than I do Finland. Though that being said, I think that might be down to the fact that most of my favourite a- a- actually play, char- play characters I like are in this. Like, Goku's original dub yeah. actor's in it. Yeah, Sean uh, Shemmel. Sean Shemmel. Uh, you've got uh, Mike Pollock's in there, Dr. Dr. Eggman. Eggman. Um, who was it that plays Misty in the, Pokemon? I, I will say remember. there are definitely glaring issues with the dub. Must I read the yes. f- <laughs> one I showed to, showed to you guys where he goes, they cannot build a raft because of the lack of trees when they're surrounded by a <laughs> fucking forest. I loved um, my, I, I was watching this this morning is um, the torturer of Griffith gets, like, he's like you can't break through this door. It's four times thicker than your sword. Ah! You know what? <laughs> That's actually accurate to the manga. Is it really? That is actually what happens in the manga. So went... the main difference, the ma- in the manga, the torture is a lot more fucked up. Oh yeah, I believe, I believe Incident- that. Yeah. Incidentally, as well, do you know what? That, do you know what's amazing? I've heard, I've read some. I don't know if this is true, but I've read somewhere that's a callback to Superman's first appearance. Yeah. Really? Yeah, in Superman's first appearance, um, uh, he tries to give a, let- a letter of innocence of our death row inmate to the mm. governor. Of the, uh, and uh, the butler says, I'm not going to take it to Gavin, try getting through that door, and he just does it. <laughs> uh, so I've heard that that's apparently it's a homage to that, but I, I don't know how much is actually into that one. It might be yeah, completely might be false. Well, uh, well, well, the big um, references in these have been all the Gundam references. Tell mm-hmm. me. I miss yeah. all of them. So uh, Griffith is a char clone. What? Yeah, he, 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 he's down on TV Tropes Wiki as a char clone because <laughs> his uh, path. Pre end of the story, so I've always been on the Yeah, we're, we're, I think we had the spoilers. Yeah, well, I already okay. said spoilers ahead. So. Yeah, okay, so everything before the eclipse, it's just chaff in visual Gundam. <laughs> I literally beat for beat. Yeah, you know, he's very. He's, they've got very, very similar story yeah. arcs. Uh, but uh, as we were just going to say, uh, yeah. as we get, as we go along, he has very similar arc with Ascalad yeah. from Vinland. I feel like Vinland Saga though. Wow, the fight scenes are so well choreographed. The, yeah, yeah, like they'll, as I said, they're also like really great adaptations of the, uh, of the manga. One scene that in particular that really sticks out in mind in both is when you see Thor, Thorfinn's first person running towards a captain to try and take off his head. Mm. That is adapted incredibly well. I, I like uh, probably one of the best presented episodes in in Vinland Saga for me is the village and the sack of the village. 
uh, in the oh, with the Christianity. Wow, the Christians. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that episode doesn't use a whole heap of like amazing frame by frame animation, but just the overall feel of it is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Do you know yeah. Do you know one ironic thing from history that um, they don't include in Vincent Saga, which is a lot of uh, English women got off with the Vikings because um, they had one advantage over the local men: they washed more regularly. <laughs> That's not a joke. That's true. Yeah, they, they they wash like every Saturday, don't they? Yeah, and they and and like and um, <laughs> and uh, apparently a, a couple of clerics even wrote, "This is a completely unfair advantage to us." <laughs> uh, I love. I, I, so I thought that that's rather interesting. And it might and it actually might be that a lot of our what our, we think about Vikings comes from Christian propaganda. Mm. So soundtrack. Soundtracks, I mean, we gotta talk about the OPs, how Berserk doesn't really fit, it's a good one, but it doesn't really fit it. I, I me, meanwhile, the, uh, meanwhile, the, the Finland Saga one has Man with a Mission. And yeah, Survive but, Said the Prophet. Yeah, so that's OP2, Man with a Mission. Dark Crow. And, uh, and Survive you know, the Prophet, that one was fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a, I mean, you gotta compare, but in terms of the music scores, Berserk kicks Vinland Saga out of the water. Um, I think it's just because Vin Berserk is way more iconic. It's that one yeah. track, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gutter yeah. Steam. Yeah. 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 Like, like, Jesus Christ, there's a reason why the song is, is highly remembered and loved. Well, one thing I, I really didn't see much of actually throughout um, Berserk, it, it, it was often without music. Which it, was, was it was very, very quiet. It was, yeah, it was really quiet very often, actually. Well, Vinland Saga had like did have a lot of music, but at the same time, I think that adds to Berserk's favour because that makes the songs more memorable yes, and makes yeah. them stick out more when you hear them. Yeah, that's a really good point. Okay, this is the thing I gotta ask you, Elliot. Which one of these do you reckon did a good job getting the art styles of their manga into animated form? Mm. I probably, I'd have to say, I have to say Venom Saga because I think Berserk's what, it was a, it was a challenge of being a product at the time and I'll be honest, even today, I don't think anyone will be able to mimic Miura's art style. Because Miura adds in so much detail. And like, you can tell that each thing, that each page, each panel took like ages to, to draw. And you just think, yeah, this, you've really taken on a Herculean task trying to animate that. Meanwhile, Villain Saga, it, do, it does a good job getting the character, character expressions down, the art style looks, very good, very much, very like the, very much like the anime. I do think the the manga is a little bit better, but again, I feel like that's just because you have more opportunities to really make your art style pop out. With you the, also can you, you also can with work animation. with a lot of different tools in that basis. So yeah. um, oh, I think we need to really get down to the votes on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, Reese, where's your vote going? I'm personally going to go with Vinland Saga. Uh, Ren. Yeah, I'm going to go with Vinland Saga, but I would like to know that I do love the 90s art style. I would say, so. it, it, in many of these categories, I judge Berserk better, but in more categories do I judge Vinland Saga better, so I'm going to vote Vinland Saga. Yeah, I'm going to have to say Vinland Saga as well. I think while Berserk's animation is definitely iconic and good for, and good for the time, I think Vinland Saga just has a higher advantage of being more recent. Yeah, I think it's going to be a common theme, well, may, maybe be a common theme, that we'll have like the iconic, you know, monolithic status of Berserk. It, you know, Know, as like a cultural touchstone. I've used that term a lot recently. Yeah. Um, uh, versus like you know what we've seen as a well produced, well sourced, well adapted um, thing. So I'm, I'm interested to I mean, hear more. more I think Villain Saga might get to that stage, considering that it did get its entire, it did get an entire live stream dedicated to what its future production was going to be. Mm. Like, I just, I just. Because it was not, it was only on Amazon originally, wasn't it? I just think yeah. that not that many people will have seen it. Necessarily. So yeah, I mean, uh, uh, unless they pirate it, yeah. Well, well, I, I, which, I, I, let's be honest, I think most anime fans do anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, a fun fact: I learned that the uh, Villain Saga manga was almost cancelled in the West mm, due okay. to low readership, but they stuck it wow. out. Yes. I managed to bring it back. And now we have those gigantic <laughs> omnibus versions, yeah, yeah, which so have like I... two volumes in, of the manga in each. Yeah. Pretty thick. Um, so, uh, let's move on to the best side cast. This is where Reese is going to get the starting vote if we need it. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's, let's talk about side... I think both of these shows are really... Str have very strong side casts. I mean, yeah. I want to say, um... Do, with all of these, when the characters... Because we're talking about protagonists and antagonists after this, the characters that don't fit in either of these... So the characters we're taking out of the mix are Askeladd... Um, Griffith. Griffith, Guts, 
and Torfin. 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 So let's talk about everyone else. That I think uh, the two I wanted to start off with, I think are the biggest comparisons of you don't start out thinking they're going to be big deals, but they turn out to be big deals. Is it Knut and Kaska? Knut and Kaska, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to talk about Kaska yeah. first, considering she's probably one of my favourite ca- anime characters ever. Yeah. She is fantastic. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say she's not a good character. Uh, mm. Because... Oh my god. Um, uh, she has... I, I will admit some of this... I think... Is it because she fights with cuts a lot? It's the fact that she needs guts to save her quite a few times. And not, fact... No, no, absolutely not. She saves herself quite often. You yeah. can tell she's a powerful swordsman. Yeah, she yeah. kind of makes her own destiny. I think it's also the fact she's um, a, a trigger warning for this one, by the way. Um, she is a ca- she, There's a few attempted rapes on her and one successful one at the yeah. end. There's a lot. There, there is more in the manga. I will say that, but it's probably yeah, one but, of my few downsides of the manga. Yeah, but uh, Twitter always focuses on her one at, at the eclipse. It's pretty fucked. Yeah, yeah but at the end of the day, it's. It, um, I, I admit it's probably. It, it went overboard. It does show Griffith's full fall to the dark side. Mm-hmm. But um, I will say, Cus- that's the thing about it as well. It's the fact that Casca was that, stro- that strong, and even she was no match I, I, for all I this. Just wanna, I just want to—I really dislike the idea of rape as a, as a narrative tool. I, I understand the point of like showing how, yeah. how far he descended, but I, I think it's, it, it is gratuitous. Well, it's, it's in quite a bit. Of, it's in quite a bit of berserk because Griffith oh. gets raped at one point. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah oh, that I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say now. Mm. Uh, I don't want to. Is it okay if I tell spoilers for the manga? Uh, I'd rather avoid spoilers for okay. the manga, because it's only I'll, some people that have never uh, gone I'll to I'll just this. say now... Uh, it gets uh, worse. Her fate in the manga is is a lot more bleak. Oh god. She, um, and she does still... She also get raped, but she does... Uh, I'll, I'll at least say this, she survives the eclipse. Yeah, no, well we know she survived, if you've seen the Golden Age movies, yeah. you know she survives the eclipse. Oh, so do you see her, the aftermath of that? They do show a bit of the aftermath yeah. in the Golden Age okay, movies. Okay, I'll, I'll say it. Basically, she, um, she loses all her memories and, and becomes, very, becomes very untrusting of everyone, even Guts. Oh. It is a really sad fate. Well, they only, they only show a bit of that in the Golden Age movies, but um, that's yeah, about... it, it, It's more a form of severe PTSD. Yeah, uh, I think it's uh, I, 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 it's one of those where you just sort of go, it's annoying that Berserk only has ever really told uh, told the Golden Age arc in anime form. They haven't really done much. I know they've done those other two scenes, but there's people that refuse to watch it because of how bad that art style is, and they yeah. can't. The art style that seems silly. No, 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 not the oh, art sorry. style. The animation, I should oh, say. Okay. Oh. The the three D ones. Oh, oh, sorry, right. Uh, sorry. The, yeah. They do ones. Yeah. 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 Again, that's kind of the unfortunate thing that that if you want to watch the later arcs of Berserk, that's where you're going to see it. Everything mm. else just as the Golden Age arc. Uh, I do like the relationship about between Cusker and Guts. It does feel very organic. Yeah. 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 Like she, it's kind of understanding that she would. And when you learn why she hates Guts at first, it's very understanding. Oh, jeez, because... you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, I went down the wrong way. We're about to have a death on, on this video. Oh, not again. Yeah. <laughs> Medic! Yeah. It's, um, but yeah, it's understandable why she would hate Guts at first, because she wants to become really... She wants to be close to Griffith. Yeah, G- Guts, pretty much with little work, ends up at Griffith's side, like, all the time. I, I did see an edit once of, uh, you know, the splash fight scene between Griffith and Guts, and yeah. they did cut it with, uh, with, uh, oh, jeez, you okay? Yeah, fine, don't worry. Um, about. they cut it with, uh, that scene from Top Gun, playing with, with the, the boys! boys. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like, I do like Casca's character. I think, unfortunately, she's used as a bit of, a, like, a, a storytelling well, there's narrative a, thing, sadly. Well, there's a term for that. It's called, um, women in fridges. It's uh, cre- it was a cre- term created by Gail Simone after um, Green Lantern. Uh, Green Lantern Carl Rayner's girlfriend was killed by a supervillain and stuffed in a fridge. It was oh, she only really existed to be stuffed in the fridge. To yeah. be stuffed in the fridge yeah. and, and keep his arc. So that's um, uh, that's where that. If you ever hear women in fridges, that's what it's a reference it, to. It feels a bit like that, but she does have her own merits. And I think yeah, she it just, yeah. It's not like that. That's character. her what. No, I feel like that. I would have more of a problem with her if that was her one purpose, but it yeah. definitely. Isn't. They give her development and they give her backstory and yeah, yeah and they also sh- and they also show like the difficulties of being a woman on the battlefield most likely when uh, this is going to be get uh, we already talked about rapists okay where she's on her period in the battle hmm. and she's like really you see she's really struggling with it I feel like that's 
Definitely. Mm-hmm. That's, I feel like that's points there, honestly. I will say, um, on the note, on uh, on that note, I did like her fight in a rivalry with a uh, misogynist Dr. Eggman. Uh, oh, yeah. God, yeah, he was one of the, I'm not going to lie, I really liked him as a villain, just because he was the only, well, one of yeah. the, one of the I, I kind of like, I kind of liked him saying, this is a, this is a family technique that has been done for the last 500 yeah. years. Yeah, which is like Armstrong before Mel Alchemist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or, yeah, or like, I use my hiding technique as a bit of past doctor. I'm my family for the fact that they use all westernized names except for his family techniques, which are all Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that it's, it's accurate to the manga, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> I was hoping he'd say so, like, you know what they say? <laughs> the more the merrier. Yeah, yeah he, he was a good villain. I liked him a lot. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I know I shouldn't because he's objectively a horrible, horrible person. But yeah, yeah, but you, no you gotta like people. You gotta like it when a character's written to be. You know, if you hate a character for being that horrible, they've yeah. done their right job. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just one bit with him I really love is when. Don't worry, lads. I have a technique. Please have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Uh, that reminds me of something. What's that from? And uh, sorry, carry on. We haven't really talked about Canute though, which we sort of started out this. Canute. Kenny's character arc is really good. Which is weird considering he's also one of the few um, actual historical figures. Mm. That... Now, if I remember, Ascalad and Dorfin are kind of named after a historical figure. They are, but uh, Kanu is the only one who we can directly tie to an, an yeah, actual... Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a comparison for Kanu. Um, com- compare Thorfinn to Van from Final Fantasy XII, because um, Ash is, the, is the, basically the real protagonist, isn't yeah. she, in Final Fantasy XII. Kanu's basically the real protagonist of... Saga. I say around the second half. It, 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 yeah, in terms so, of his actual importance. Of his yeah, character. although um, I, I do like the relationship of him and Ascalad because yes. it, it, it sort of like it becomes that sort of near father son bond. Yeah. Yeah. Not like treasure island. Kind of. You can definitely tell there's like a bit of distrust with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, like uh, and, and everyone's. And, he and, almost, he almost like. I think he feels like. Okay, so he is in my service. I can control him. That kind of is kind of what made him a bit feel a bit more safe, almost. Yeah. Everyone and in Vinland Saga, the big difference between Vinland Saga and Berserk is, while um, in Vinland Saga, everyone's out for their own um, for their uh, their own goals. Yeah. In Berserk, everyone is out for their own goals, except to a certain extent, Guts. Guts just wants to do whatever he want, wants yeah. to do. He doesn't really have a great agenda at the end of the day. No, I would kind of say ev- in B- Berserk, everyone's following a Griffith. They're just following their guardian angel. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that, it is that line, um, if I couldn't be the best in the world, then I would follow the person who would become. Yeah, mm-hmm. ah, Judo's a great character. Yeah. Yeah, well, how, how about, Ju- what, what's his name? Ju- Judo. Judo. That's, uh, so what about him as a character? Then? He's, uh, he's all the characters nice. from... All the characters from Berserk, I actually the side characters from Berserk, I actually really like a uh, Judo, Ricket, Pippin, even Caucus to an extent. What they do a great job of getting you to love those characters. So when the eclipse happens, it's a yeah. fucking gut. Yeah, fun. like yeah. when I first read, w- w- I haven't seen what happened the eclipse or like really heard of it when I first saw, read the man the manga. I kind of had a feeling. Okay, something happens to them. What happened to Griffith? I was just reading it and. I was. I just could. Be, I could barely breathe. Mm. I was so shocked. Like it's on par with the Red Wedding. Wow. Mm. I mean, uh, well, Berserk is to... Berserk. Often is called the anime Game of Thrones. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I, I just like to say about the eclipse. I, I mean, I just, I just saw it. And I was like, Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Souls. <laughs> no, it's, no. I say it's more like blood, the nightmare on my blood. Well, I, I just mean the just the big yeah. hanging black circle in the sky. Uh, what do you? Um, uh, how, how about um, uh, the guy voiced by One for All uh, in the Saga? In the, in the Bjorn. Bjorn. Well, Bjorn does. Uh, Bjorn is a good character to talk about. No, Thor's. Uh, yeah, oh, Thor. Oh, yeah, Thor's. Yeah, yeah. Thor's is a good. Yeah, he, he's all, yeah, he's awesome. Just, yeah, dis- yeah, despite the amount of, despite the fact that you only see him like the first four episodes of the first, the first two volumes of the manga, he stays in your head. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's also um, like I still get chills thinking of that, thinking of that line where he, he has a, holding Thorfinn when he first gets the knife and just goes, "Who are you planning on stabbing with that blade, kid? <laughs> Enemies." And who are your enemies? Yeah, mm. and I, I I really like the roles of guiding like characters like I mean Uncle Ben. Uh, what about I mean spoilers uh, for Gurren Lagann, <laughs> uh, but Kamina. Yeah. You know, like a, a character dying early on and motivating a character. Obi- is great. Ben Kenobi. Yeah, great. Yeah. great I great still stuff. can't believe really I avoided that spoiler when I first watched. Uh, how on earth? I have no idea. You, you absolutely that. Nothing. And now I've just been given a spoiler. Oh! 
No! It's okay. I've not even seen it. It's okay. Oh, well, well, the best Mecha shows of all time. Oh, it is I, okay. I have not seen it yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's fine. I'm don't so worry. Sorry. I'm not. As, I'm not that salty about spoilers. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm unlike me and Reese, that. who have had yeah. to mute half of our um, Twitter for Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Yeah, because <sighs> that's leaked early. Again, sorry. Oh, that's I, such... I asked to go leaked to go along with the look with the world famous Last of Us Part One. <laughs> I can't what believe people. Are, I can't believe people are saying don't stop the leaks and spoilers. Yeah, just stop spoiling a game that came out nine years ago. Nine years. Nine years. Fucking hell. Yeah, the spoiler wall is fine on that. The spoiler wall is fine on that one. Um, Elliot, forget what I said. No one does. It's it's okay. (laughs) No, uh, it's Uh, fine. Again, I'm I'm the way I no I so far the same thing that one of my friends do does. I try to avoid spoilers, but I'm gonna see it eventually, so it won't matter. But I also think if the if something's based around the idea you need to not be spoiled on it, then there's a weakness in the story. Yeah. No, it, it just enhances that, I would say. Any, anyway, back to yeah. Thor's. Um, uh, but let, uh, a couple of other characters I want to talk about in Villain Saga. Um, Borkel. Borkel and yeah. Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn doesn't get as much, but I do love the build-up to the fight yeah. between him and Askeladd. Meanwhile, yeah. Thorkel is one of my favourite characters yeah. in the series. How are you doing, everyone? <laughs> yeah. Want me to kill you? <laughs> Get back here and fight me! <laughs> yeah, he's just uh, so cheerful. He's uh, a... <laughs> yeah, he, He's a he's a massive machine, yet he just loves killing. Yeah, yeah he's basically that prick who kicks everyone's ass on Smash Bros. and says, Come on, guys, we're all having fun no, here! Yeah. Well, Elliot. Yeah. <laughs> he's the eight-foot-tall dude in the mosh pit who no one wants to go in the mosh pit. No, yes, <laughs> yes, that fucker. That fucker. It's a, um, oh, the God. Th- the, thing that I re- the, the thing that I really like about him is that he will fight... He, he's not just up for fighting anyone. Like when Askeladd pretended to go mad... Around yeah. the around the end, he refused to fight him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, I see what he's doing here. Yeah. No. yeah. So I'm in my popcorn. <laughs> so, so Canute then, because we didn't really talk more. more Canute, time. I think his character arc is very much. Uh, well, it lies. It's, it's pretty much the cowardly prince becomes yeah. a great king. Mm, yeah. I do. Um, I I liked he. I like the fact that he was the one to stab Askeladd in the yeah. end, and mm. that Askeladd essentially makes that sacrifice for him. And yeah. he knows it, but he yeah. has to go along with it. But it's also, but Okinu also brings like the most tragic bit mm. with Askeladd with mm. Askeladd dying because you just think Thorfinn. The last eleven years of Thorfinn that Thorfinn's had has just led. It's just meant nothing now. Mm. Yeah. Can I also add into the mix? I think it is quite historically accurate how Canute becomes oh. king. Mm. I it, don't know. it does happen. Would you say it happens a bit? Sporadically, like yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit instant. Like he doesn't slowly His build. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of get a bit of that when he first talks to Thorfinn, but then all of a sudden, his friend, his mentor, his mentor dies, and all of a sudden, boom! I'm, yeah. I'm a great king now. Yeah, it, it is, it is very sudden. I also, meanwhile, want... I guess, I guess with Casca, you can definitely see is a bit more build up. Yeah. What, yeah. One of the things I want to add to this one, um, when in regards to Canute as well, though. It it's kind it, it does it, I, I'm with you it is quite abrupt it does feel satisfying though I'd say it does definitely feel yeah. satisfying I also, okay, I also think they didn't have as much time to work with him because he's in the se- only really in the second half of the show he's not really in the first half all that much well, he's present but he's not he's not a mm, he does he does make make an he, the first time we see him is in the third volume okay. of the manga oh I guess in with the omnibus around the second one. Let, let, let's get straight to the votes, yeah, I'd say. I yeah. think we've gone as far as the end. So, Elliot, where's your vote going in this one? Uh, I'm this is go, a hard one for I'm going to have to go Berserk, honestly. I, th- I, per- I really like Casca's arc, and I think the side characters are just a little bit more memorable than with... I'm going to go Venom Saga. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna throw the vote to Reese. I'm gonna go berserk. I'm um, gonna go uh, Villain Saga. Oh, oh shit! Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, because I, I I think just personally the side cast is more memorable in Villain Saga. The more defined personalities. I will agree with you. There are a little few more defined personalities in yeah. uh, that in that side cast. But uh, I think it, for me the reason I voted Berserk was mm. I think it was more of a gut punch when a whole bunch of them died. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll give you meanwhile, that. Meanwhile, like meanwhile, like when a number when you really think about uh, Villain Saga. With the side characters that, re- that hit me when they died, the only one I could really think of was Bjorn. Yeah, that's my fault. Bjorn was the only one where I went. Mm, like shit. with the, like with the two like with the two brothers, I can barely remember them. Oh wait, we forgot the priest as well. 
the priest. I like the priest. The priest was funny. Yeah, but also falls. Who has that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, thoughts scene. as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thoughts. What was your reason to go Vin? Uh, you've sort of explained it. Any else you want to add to your reasoning for going Vinland on this one? Uh, just that the a lot of the ones for Berserk they were just pushed to the backgrounds oh, to I focus see. on the main cast more. They, uh, that that was. Kind of, I felt like that was a little bit the case with Vinland Saga as well. I think. Uh, like I, with, I think. With, more, gonna... I, I think I'm with Reese on this one. I think it was more pronounced in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think with Berserk there's a dichotomy because the script and guts. But also yeah. I wonder how much more they were given in the manga. Did yeah, but a lot I, more yeah, but, on the side yeah, but it, whereas in Vinland Saga it's a tricophony because it's um, Torf, it's well, Thorfinn. Askeladd and Canute. I, I would say that Thorfinn's hardly a factor in, in the in the importance of the overall narrative. He's From what I've heard, he's, he's going to get more as the manga oh, yeah, goes yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've got the slave arc next, which I'm pretty sure it's going to focus. It's definitely going to have more focus on Thorfinn. So, so was there much, was there much expansion on the side cast in Berserk? I expect so. Uh, yeah. There was a manga. There was a fair. There was a. There was a fair bit. For example, uh, something they didn't show in the mm. anime. Rickett survived his encounter with the monster and was actually oh. one of the people who one well, of the main factors that saved Guts and Casca. Oh, right. Wow. And and he he did he actually helped Guts a lot. He built the arm cannon for one and the oh, crossbow. Oh. Right. Oh, so it wasn't the blacksmith then like we see in the uh, post credit scene in the, the anime. Blacksmith created the Dragon Slayer hmm. sword. Uh Rickett did the Rickett did the other stuff. And even after that you see like how much of an influence all the other characters Made of guts. For example, guts uses throwing knife now because he got Judo to teach him. Oh, right. He just oh. never used it in the Golden Age art because he it didn't really fit fit his style. He thought, mm. oh, it could it might be useful. Yeah. Um, big saw go burr. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, okay, so the, we spent all this time talking about Berserk a lot, but Vinland is winning currently two zero. Yeah. So let's see, is it going to be a three zero, or are we going to, or are we going to, is Berserk going to win one back? It's best protagonist, and Ren gets the casting vote this time. Oh mm. God, okay, right. Um, <laughs> so we got uh, Thorfinn and Guts. Now yes. these two are very similar in the sense of they're very single-minded. The only difference I'd say is uh, uh, Thorfinn knows exactly what he wants, whereas, or he thinks he knows exactly yeah. what he wants, whereas Guts is kind of trying to figure out what he wants. Guts, yeah. Guts at the beginning of the story he is, as he said, he's wandering around the different. He's wandering. He's just wandering from mercenary band to mercenary yeah. band. As sort, a, uh, uh, sort of yeah. as as a surviving mercenary. Meanwhile, then he still sort of finds a place in the band of the hawks. I, I and it, as he says in the anime, he didn't realize what he had until he lost yeah. it. Yeah. I, th I think uh, Guts is a character who has agency, uh, but has no specific desire. Thorfinn yeah. has zero agency <laughs> and has a single-minded desire, which ultimately is never yeah. realized. I will say. We did actually miss a massive bit, bit of guts in the anime, though, as opposed to the manga, what? Oh, you which is we skip? saw, which is before we saw him as a teenager, because in the yeah. anime it skips straight to him as a teenager. Meanwhile, in the manga, we got a lot with him as a kid, child, with his first mercenary gear with Beck Gambino. Yeah, and we get that bit, and arguably that bit is like really damn. Really damn good because we see in that we see why Guts uses giant swords because he when he was a kid he practiced fighting with a long sword mm. because they didn't have like any as as they always call it we don't obviously, have any obviously swords. cut for time so, so yeah. he's not compensating for anything no no well, no possibly. We, no no Casca will attest to the, to that um, uh, no, no again we've already mentioned his relationship with Casca but it's also his relationship with Griffith as well as a yeah. big part of his uh, role because yeah. he, 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 I mean, the whole thing starts out of him losing mm -hmm. a match against uh, Griffith, yeah. and probably the events that kind of kick off the the the, the eclipse kind of starts when he beats Griffith. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, we'll talk about that more. Arguably, it could be, it could just be, have been when he entered the band of the Hawks, because yeah, he he was one of the main things that brought them up. But at the same time, Griffith, like, as you could tell that Griffith really seemed to have a bit of an obsession with him. Yeah, because, um, like it, he even said, you in during the eclipse, you were the only one that made me mm. think about stopping my dream. So mm. can, can I just clarify something? Was this always was the eclipse always Griffith's end game? No. no, his end game was to gain his own kingdom. Right, but it's it's he just, he just, so he just an opportunist yeah. really. His so to put it simply, uh, if the eclipse hadn't happened, his goal was to 
marry Princess Charlotte, become the King of Midland. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, again, it's kind of like, he, 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 we, he, you get a sense he's planning it as he goes along, because, mm. and you can't, because he, uh, he, his big down, I mean, we'll get to this in the next one, but mm-hmm. his big downfall kind of comes because he acts on that plan too soon. Uh, and because he loses. No. Yeah, which is him trying to gain back no, I, something. The, no, the way I saw it, the scene with him and Charlotte was him taking out his frustration for guts yeah. leaving almost. Mm. Yeah, which again was a, a big mistake. Yeah, he, which he was, was always, he was always going to do this. It was just he, he, he just forcefully did it forceful rather than let it progress naturally. Yeah. yeah. Um, what about uh, 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 Reese? You've you've seen both of these sh- shows. Yeah, what's your <laughs> your t- what's your take on uh, the, these two in terms of comparison between the two of them? Well, a uh, main comparison I think with uh, Thorfinn is that for most of the anime, he's sort of a silent protagonist. Yeah, he doesn't say a lot, does he? Yeah, no. uh, comparison to people. It's mainly the other people who revolve the plot around him. Um, it's all he's just like an unknown factor going off or being used as a weapon. Well, G- Guts isn't exactly a silent protagonist. Yeah. To be now, here's sort of my thought, my thought on it. In Berserk, my focus was always on Guts. I mean, in Vinland Saga, my focus was normally on the characters around Thorfinn, yes, exactly. yeah. rather than him, Thorfinn himself. Yeah. Thorfinn, though, is very much the protagonist, in a sense. Yes, he, he is. By the, he, he's the focal character. Yeah. He is, mm-hmm. by the same, by the oh, sa- no, no, no. But at the same time, like, while Guts has, like, is, again, multi- is very multi-layered, as we discovered down the line, he, mm-hmm. like, he sort of learns through the, through the Band of the Hawk, like, what, how do I describe it? Uh, throughout his time with Ben Hawk, he starts to respect Griffith. Mm. And when he hears, obviously, what Griffith said, saying, the only man I can really call friend is one who is my equal. Mm. Yeah. Which is essentially what leads Guts to eventually leave. So you can tell, like, it's a two-way res- respect yeah. thing. Mm. Whereas, you look at, uh, you get a sense of that respect between, um, uh, to- uh, Torfin, Thorfinn and um, Askeladd. It's more one way though. With yeah. Askeladd, and actually no, even then you can still tell there's like mo- it's mostly <clears throat> hatred. I, I, yeah. Like like it's, when you see that final duel between Thorfinn and Askeladd, you you see like Askeladd just keeps saying he's sick and tired of having to fight him. Yeah, yeah, because uh, because it... Thorfinn does nothing different. Exactly. Yeah, because uh, Askeladd sees him more of like an, an annoyance rather than a true threat. Yeah, I, yeah I, I think I think he still sees him as a, a, a surrogate son in a way. So I, I think I think and I think Thorfinn, ironically, yeah, well, no, I think I think Thorfinn views Askeladd as, as a surrogate father. Again, ironically, I don't. I'm sorry. I I, I again. I just re- I really don't see that. I see Thorfinn just because throughout the entire of it, you see Thorfinn all only like talking to Askeladd, saying like how he's going to kill him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and I like focus it's... on that. But I think at the same time. That's because his, the thought of revenge just consumed him so much, and eventually he gets nothing out of it. His hatred leads to nothing. But, but yeah. I, I think it's a really, I think it's a very, I don't think it's a good view of, as, as like a father. It's a very twisted view. I mean, Askeladd teaches him things. He does invest time in him. He does, he does talk to him at times, and it's not always, it's not always vicious and aggressive. But and he but, does reward him with duels for if he pulls off tasks successfully. Yeah, but, but that's mostly because with Askeladd he thinks. I can manipulate this kid. Well, yeah, and and, and that's why uh, Askeladd is such an in, in, interesting character. I think is that he uh, he really straddles the line between villain and and you know and, and folk character. I think very yeah. very well. He, uh, and, the, well and, and the payoff. Well, it's not a payoff. It's a massive blue balls at the end. Well, of we're talking like, we're talking about Thorfinn, not Askeladd. We're talking no, no, about no, Askeladd. That's what I mean. Is that is that Askeladd's death to Thorfinn isn't a resolution. It's it's um, yeah, like. That is gotta be honestly my favorite revenge ending to any revenge story. 100%. Just like, like that's that's the that's the tragic end in the Last of Us Two wishes it had. <laughs> I, I I also get a sense that Askeladd doesn't hate him because he's Icelandic, not Danish, and we know from that bit of dialogue he has yeah. no love for the yeah, Danes. Yeah, he more he more hates. Ed, well, as we said, we, he hates Thorfinn because he in all those years. As he says, in all your years, you've learned nothing. Exactly. And on some yeah. like when he fights, when Thorfinn fights anyone else, he's he's careful, he's methodical. Like you can ask so as and yeah, when he fights Askeladd, it's just fuel yeah. with anger, yeah, predictable. Exactly. And Askeladd does want to embrace his Welsh heritage, he, yeah. uh, even though it's clearly fucked up about why he wants to embrace <laughs> that. 
Um, uh, I, I think both, uh, the, the big difference is, I don't think Guts exactly, Guts's resolution in the anime leads into the manga, whereas uh, I'd say, but actually both of these kind of have a sense of what they've got a bit of a their character arc's not entirely done it's yeah. to be continued yeah one with Thor with Thorfinn it's the aftermath of his revenge arc meanwhile with Guts his revenge arc begins yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's more he he more tries to take he, he's not just going after Griffith he's going after the Apostles as a whole yeah um and it's also um I I, I don't know what more we can add to this I'd say character design wise um, Guts wins on this one because he's a, like, he's become an iconic looking character for a reason. Yeah. Hence the whole Black Swordsman trope. Yeah, exactly. That stems I, I from think, him. I think Thorfinn's character design very much reflects his immature his immaturity and the fact that he's still a brooding teenager, really. Yeah. yeah. But, but it, so it does translate well. But I, I think you're yeah. right. Guts uh, is... Well, especially because all the means of uh, people saying um, photoshopping like the iPod headphones onto him, saying, "Oh, he's listening to <laughs> Linkin Park again." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is weird because yeah, 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 just that. just change it. Just change his hair black, put some eyeliner. Like, How <laughs> could yeah. this happen to me? Yeah, literally. Uh, which is weird because we all expected it, whereas most of the other people in it look like they're just a Mon Marth fans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I I think we need to get to voting, I'd say. Sure. Um, uh, Reese, where's your vote going? Uh, mine's going to go with Berserk and Guts. Uh, Elliot? It's no contest for me. Guts wins. Ah, and it's me. It's Guts as well. I was going to vote Guts as well today. So, so, yeah, I, just again, there's so much more layers to him. You see him, you see oh, him like you. grow up and mature, and mature <laughs> more. Meanwhile, meanwhile, with Thorfinn, it's all just murder, 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 murder. Yeah. It, it, it's because you can see where he's coming from. Yeah. But at the same, but at the same time, there's a reason why Guts is like still the main vocal point. Meanwhile, yeah. with Thorfinn, it feels more like you're focusing on everyone around him. We'll, we'll, we'll get onto this in story structure, but I think I, I, it would have been interesting to see, you know, the, the end point of Vinland Saga, um, Thorfinn moving on with his life. That's where we see him at the start, similar to Berserk, where it's all told in flashback. I mm. think that would have been an right. interesting way let's, of conveying that story. Let's talk, uh, it's my cast. I mean, honestly, the manga kind of does that. You know, like, you know the, the fight where, like, they carry the boats Boats towards the fort, the fortress, and fight there. That's where the manga starts. Did anyone really? else? Do, did yeah, they... that's where. It's, that's yeah, where yeah, it yeah. I've read, the, I've read the first as volume. A, of the as, manga. A ma- as a matter of fact, the uh, a lot, a lot of the childhood stuff that you see of of Thorfinn sort of learns to survive on his own. A lot of that is anime only. I'm pretty sure. Oh. I, 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 I feel that was a good addition. To be fair. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, anyone else sort of think when they're carrying the boats like this, they want to go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> 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 oh. Interestingly, that was also a technique used by the Ottomans when uh, taking Constantinople in the, in the 15th century. Mm-hmm. They uh, they travelled the boats over land. Continue. Uh, well, <laughs> well, let's go back to Constantinople. <laughs> 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 go back to Constantinople. <laughs> Long time gone. Constantinople. Why did Constantinople get the works? That's, that's nobody's business but the Turks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's a that's a weird tangent. Yeah, Let's yeah, move yeah. on quickly to villain, villain, yes. the uh, uh, antagonists, so and both of these shows are kind of defined by their antagonists. Yes. I'd say to a certain extent. So Griffith and Askeladd. I think with Griffith, his payoff is brilliant because you've grown to like him throughout most of the show. Yeah, I've never seen a villain who you love, then feel sorry for, then despise yeah. at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And it's done so brilliantly. It's like he has developed this trust amongst his men. Mm-hmm. He has built this thing. You truly believe in his goal. And then by the end, he betrays everything mm-hmm. for yeah. his own selfish gain. Yeah. He's, and, and, and what makes it great is the fact he believes he's justified in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He completely fucks up the world for his own reasons, and he du- and he thinks it was the right thing to do. And I think that's a great kind of villain. Yeah, because the, the the scariest kind of villain is the one who thinks they are the hero of their own story. Exactly. Yeah, so. Um, and, and also flawed characters. You can't yeah. have a flawless. Villain yeah, and character. like his downfall is done really fucking well. Mm-hmm. Like when you, like when, you, obviously again, it's after guts. It's after Guts leaves, which I think wh- I think it's debatable whether it is Guts is whether it's more Guts's fault or Griffith's fault. It's Griffith's that, fault. That, Griffith's. Yeah, Griffith's. but I mean, like, how much of a blame does Guts take for leaving? Because that is sort of the catalyst at least to Griffith's downfall in a way. Catalyst, yeah. Yeah, but I'd say with um, again with Griffith, he he's his 
he uh, uh, the the biggest problem is as soon as guts leaves, it's the one thing he couldn't control. So he then acts irrationally yeah. to try and regain control. Yeah. yeah, like as I said, the scene with Charlotte, with Charlotte in the anime is very, or the anime manga, sorry, is very much more in my eyes a sense of him taking con- taking control or taking out his frustration it's also, it's also quite uncom- Guts leaving. It's also really uncomfortable considering it's Misty's voice actress in that yeah. role. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's, uh, to be fair, she couldn't have known at the time she was going to be playing one of the most iconic female characters in anime. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is funny as well, because this was the same year that Pokemon was airing as well. <laughs> at the same no time. Way. What? Was yeah. it the same year that the dub came out, though? Uh, uh, no, sure. it was at least 98, 99. Yeah. So. Right, okay. Uh, I, I don't I don't remember exactly when the two dubs of these came out, but there was a, quite a bit of a gap between them, I believe. Mm. Um, I, I, I'm going to say, I mean, uh, hopefully this won't detract points from it, but I don't actually, I'm not convinced Askeladd is, is an antagonist. I, I, I say he's somewhere in the... He's definitely, yeah. an, anta- definitely an antagonist because he's a threat, but I wouldn't say he's a bad guy. Also, it's, a lot we... like, it's a lot like, in a way... L is the antagonist of of Death yeah, Note. That's a good like example. he's like he's definitely the good guy, but because he's against the main character, yeah. he is pretty much. The antagonist. But it's also the fact that Askeladd and and Griffith was the thing that kind of drove this thing. I thought yes. those two characters are very oh, very yeah. similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both <laughs> trying to form their own kingdom. The only difference is Askeladd, he all, he already kind of announces he's going to betray his own men. Well, yeah. in, in a way, then. So maybe maybe we should view. I don't know if Ascalad was after his own kingdom. I, th- I don't know what Ascalad's end goal really was. Well, he, he did. He kind of said he hated the Danes, and he, he wanted. Did, to... He said he hated. He said he hated the Danes, but I think it was more just general hatred. I don't think that was really. Wasn't, wasn't I was it... more saying that I think to rile up his men so they could really go out, go yeah. out on him. But I mean, he, I think he was kind of like a wild dog anyway. He he, he was quite conniving. Yeah. But I mean, ultimately he acted irrationally. I, th- I think he just wanted to be like. I think it was just fine being the leader of Vikings. We were all Griffith obviously had higher goals yeah, yeah. and uh, and we see that by the fact that he's willing to sell his body yeah, in yeah. one particular scene and then he gets that yeah. great comeback where he yeah, just says because... by the when he reunites him and essentially kills his abuser he says you were just a pebble on the stone that I happened to pick yeah. up and throw away yeah, he, yeah. Um, I mean he you can kind of see where Griffith's coming from with that bit as well because in a way he said he did because he said didn't it why should I sacrifice the bodies of hundreds when I can sacrifice mine for one night? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's um. I it, think it's there are so many points with Griffith that you think, oh, he's actually like morally justified in what he's doing. In, in a way, at, again, again, at the beginning, he kind of was. Yeah. It is definitely sort of a fallen hero, absolutely kind yeah. of situation. Sh- shall we discuss the um, quote-unquote twist about Ascalad? Because um, and I say quote-unquote because. It, we don't know for a fact if he truly is the king of the Britons. Well, he's a descendant of Artorius. But so, was Artorius like a king of Britain? King Arthur. Uh, suppose it, supposedly, but we don't. But again, for all we know, um, he's embellished that fact, and he's just yeah. doing, doing. But uh, so, is he truly the king of the? Uh, again, both of the. Uh, is he truly a king of the Britons, and he's trying to claim the throne that he's uh, believes he's entitled to, or is he just making this shit up so that I think he gets out of it? He can get Canute out of this situation that he's put him, that he's been put in. I would probably say more as the latter, but I but it's kind of unfitting for his character in a way. It, it would seem strange for him to go to the length that he does without a goal in mind. I would say I would say he probably believes he's the right one to but, Do you know what I compared it to? And I think this works well. And I think um, you'll agree with me on this one, Reese, because yeah. we're both big fans of this film. Sure. Uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. They don't actually say in that film is Decker a replicant? <clears throat> yes. They sort of bring it up. And then sort of hand roll it away because they know we have to bring it up, but we know it's also not that important. Yeah. yeah. The thing I find, the thing I find kind of funny is that the movie keeps it uh, ambiguous whether he is. I mean, mm. I guess I think it's the right word. Meanwhile, meanwhile in the book they fall on state. No, he 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 isn't he, a replicant. Yeah, and, and um, I'm personally under the belief that Deckard isn't a replicant. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, Risa. You say what's your opinion on? I I don't think he is. I I, I, I say, say no. Also. Yeah, I say. Well, no. Also, why would you make a a, rogue, a a sort of a replicant to hunt other replicants and then make him totally apathetic <laughs> and impossible to do the bloody job? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shit design. <laughs> I just that. Shits and giggles. <laughs> Made by Elon Musk. Yeah. Uh, um, the, uh, but that, it brings up that, but I, the point I was making on that is the fact that the king, the, whether he's a king of the Britons kind of doesn't matter because he's in that situation. He's in that situation yeah. and that's the decision he makes. Mm. Yeah, and he, he could just be using that as clout to uh, 
take control from others as well. Yeah. Saying, no, oh, I'm the center yeah. of our I mean, I mean, when you, when you think about it, I mean, his mother was saying, oh, we are descendants of Artorias, but she was already walking a thin line to madness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, right? So yeah. it could have just been entirely in, in her head. So like, yeah. she, like, she nearly got killed by Ascalas' father because she thought it was Artorias come back. It's also given a good reason for Canute to kill him because um, Canute would... He'd have if he wanted to be the king of the Britons, he'd have to kill Canute eventually because the way succession works, Canute was always going to be the next king. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Um, well, that was his brother Howard as well. Oh yeah, well there was Howard as well. Yeah. Maybe a bit of a strange comparison, but um, like like in Joker, like you know, Joker's mum tells him, "Oh, you're the son of Thomas Wayne." Oh yeah, that's we, <laughs> but we don't. Well, actually, that, well, but that's the thing. It's not. Maybe it's not a spoiler because we don't actually we, know if it's true. So for, all, for all we know, he's not the son of Thomas Wayne, and uh, I mean, I'm. Uh, I mean, that entire film could be entirely in Joker's head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which I think is a nice, it links quite well with Asgard then, is, is he could be really functioning under the belief that he is. It doesn't make a fucking difference if he is or not, because yeah. we don't actually know, and it doesn't make it... Also, you know, it in. while we're on the subject of this one, Todd Phillips, we know you like Martin Scorsese. Stop <laughs> making Martin Scorsese <laughs> copy films. You've done it twice now. Well, uh, at least with the uh, sequel to Joker, it's confirmed to be a musical. I have... Yeah, yeah, did you know that? Fun. Yeah, I yeah. have no idea why. It's I, yeah. fitting for him, but it's not fitting for the first film. What the fuck? Yeah. I like the, um, I've already heard they put in that um, song from, the one of the few good things about that Killing Joke anim- anime adaptation, there's not many you can say about it, but um, um, one of the good things was that they did do a very good version of that song, I go loony. I, 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 I liked the, I honestly kind of like the Killing Joke after the after like the first thirty minutes, uh, I yeah, guess, like, it's a whole opening thing with Batgirl. It's like, yeah, it's the uh, opening thing with Batgirl and like the gay character. Yeah, I, th- I think uh, yeah, I think after that it does a pretty all right job at that. Yeah, why did they feel the need to put in a, a gay stereotype who would have been, who would have been, who would have been probably considered offensive in the nineties? Yeah, um, the uh, dumbest. Uh, but um, going back to our original point. Which was because uh, we'll, we'll probably get because we'll probably uh, 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 Artorias. Yes, yeah. yeah. good. Uh, that might concentrate people not cancelling. Which, by the way, every time I think of Artorias, please tell me I'm not the only one who thinks Dark Souls. Uh, yes, yeah. I, I, I think um, with uh, with Ascalad, Oh, I had a point and it's gone now. Never mind. <laughs> oh, that, no, that was it. I think the true true antagonists, if we want to view it in like proper actual oppositional forces, would be the Apostles and would be um, Canoop's dad. But can you style? I would definitely agree with you. Yeah, though. yeah like, I agree with you on that one. He's not the true antagonist, but I feel like again, it's because Asgard is the opposition to Thorfinn. Yeah, yes, yeah. he is exactly, defined yeah. as the antagonist. And I also think we need to compare these two characters. Oh yeah, together. yeah, one hundred percent. I just mean, but that's why it's an interesting discussion to have, is because yeah. these characters are so multifaceted. But both Griffith and Asgard. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know where to go with this one. To be honest, this yeah, is. I really... think. I think Griffith. I'll say this. I think Griffith's downfall is better than Asgard's because with Griffith. Or his downfall is entirely by his own making. Meanwhile, with Askeladd, oh, it's... everyone thinks his luck is right now, and therefore yeah. they, oh, we better go kill him! Yeah. Whereas Askeladd, I think he knew he had to die at that point. Yeah, As- Askeladd's reaction yeah. in that point is so makes so much sense with the context of being a slave as a child, because he doesn't want to be put back in shackles, and he, he yeah. knows he can't, be, he, he can't go back to yeah. living outside I don't think... freedom. Has I... someone broken in and started making loads I don't of tea? Think he, yeah. I don't think he knew... I don't think Askeladd... Knew he had to die at that moment. I think it was just prepared to. I feel like if he hadn't been stopped, he would have just yeah. he could, himself king. He, he, I think he was trying to buy time, considering he had a way out or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah compared, compared to Griffith, where he had a goal in mind the entire story. Yeah, and, and yeah. he was just he was uh, uh, obviously completely barred from achieving that goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm go I'm gonna Similar. I'm going to now ask for a vote. I'm oh, afraid. This is so hard. Um, good news, you're going third. Uh, <laughs> Reese, I will go berserk with Griffith. Uh, again, uh, as much as I love Ascal, has no contest, Griffith wins. Ren? I'd have to go Griffith. I have to go Griffith. Do you know what my vote would have been Griffith as yeah. well? Yeah. yeah. I mean, his rise and downfall is just such a good story. Yeah. Like, oh. you could tell the Golden Age was mostly about him. I love the fact we've done one of these versus matches and it's not, it's not a complete it, one-sided yeah. thing. I, I really I really do not want to do a disservice to Askeladd because he's... Yeah, no, 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 oh, I'd like to know, Askeladd's a fucking amazing he's villain. One of my, yeah. He's one of my top favourite characters in anime, I would say. I just yeah. absolutely love him. I mean, hell, when, hell, he's, he, hell, he's my favourite... He's one of my favourite... He's either one of my favorite antagonists in anime as well. Yeah. Oh, was my favourite character in that year. Oh, yeah, and, and, in, the, and in the show overall, he's, he's yeah. phenomenal. So uh... let's 
So let's talk um, story structure. We've yep. got to talk about it. Yeah. The final category. Oh, it all comes down to this. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should really make if I should make manga comparisons with Berserk here. Because the structure in the manga is a lot better than the anime. At the, at the end of the day, we're comparing the anime. So yeah. yeah. So let, let's, let's throw out these things as yeah. adaptations. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at these things. Let's yeah. assume, let's treat these things as they were both original shows. Yeah. So keep it an anime only. Then yeah. after this, then you can I talk think, about the manga. Can I can I say the biggest problem I have with Berserk's anime story structure is the fact that we st we essentially get a flashback, and that's the entire fucking season. They never go back to that thing that they set up at the beginning. That's oh, yeah. that's more. Be well, that's kind oh. of the case with the go with the Black Swordsman arc in the manga. In the manga, the Black Swordsman arc, as I said, takes place around. I think takes place around up until the penultimate chapter, I believe, of volume three, of volume three, and that normally acts as an introduction mm. to Berserk, to not Berserk, to Guts, a brief introduction to the God Hand, uh, the Apostles, the way that the, the way that the world currently, the, and the way that the world currently is, and also it also introduces us to Puck, who the anime never brings brings come brings out, except in the bloody. Um... Golden Age art movies. They put Puck in loads of Puck? a little fairy. Puck, I, I, well, we do see Puck in the Golden Age arc in the manga, but that's just because she was part of the uh, she or he, I'm not sure of, of the uh, small circus cart that Ricketts was mm -hmm. was wandering with for a bit before they found the eclipse. Yeah, but the point I'm making on that is that was a smart cut yeah. for the anime. I have no idea why they put it back in with yeah. uh, the movies, like especially during no, the... again, you only see him in the Golden Age arc. Yeah. Not in the Golden Age, the Black Swordsman arc. In the Golden Age arc, they only have like one Ones. small, yeah, and one again, small bit. And again, it's, that's in the movies, but it's like, you could have cut this and it would have made a fucking bit of difference. The, yeah. the fact that the anime kind of proved that you can cut it and it doesn't make a difference. The biggest problem I had as well with the movie, it, like, let's compare the story structure of the movies with the anime, for example. Like, the biggest problem with the movies is, they had only like four hours to tell their entire bloody, the entire bloody Golden Age arc, whereas the... Um, that would be... A volume every twenty minutes, oh. and that's and that and the an whereas the anime is double that, mm. like and yeah. as a result, and, and even then they had to cut a lot. Yeah, a lot. So yeah. yeah but to, uh, but to be fair, the, I think the cuts are quite smart. Yeah, well, I, I'd I'd say so to an I'd say so to an extent. There were definitely some elements that they cut out that were definitely going to play a part in the later part. Do you mind that. if we come back to those? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do I'll talk about them after. Where is I mean, Vinland, we don't talk about cuts because, it, as we've already mentioned, it's a very loyal adaptation. It is really loyal, yeah. And if anything, you had more injected into it with the anime only stuff. But yeah, yeah. We, we've had, of course, as, as Elliot mentioned, yeah. we had the um, Ask uh, for the... Learning to Survive in the Wheel. Yes. If anything, I think the, the biggest difference to the story structure is it kind of abandons Thorfinn at one point to be more about Askeladd. Yeah. Askeladd and Canute, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Again, that, that comes back to my point of Thorfinn being almost a non-factor in, in the whole show. He's, he's not... He's, he's he pleasant, is at, the, he's he's at the very beginning. Like, at the very oh, beginning, yes, you, can yeah. t you can tell, like... It's almost like he shares a spotlight with other people. Like, at the beginning, it was him and Thor's. After that, it's him and Askeladd. Yeah. Then, uh, then it, it sort of almost kind of drops into be to, for Askeladd and Canoe. Like, I, it, I, it makes sense because I, I think um, Thorfinn's important origins are his dad dies and then he, want, he wants to kill yeah, his yeah, the main, yeah, the very big element parts to that is is his dad dying. Arguably, when Thorkell tells him about his father abandoning them yeah. and then Asgard's death. Do you want to tell you a scene that really bothers me in um, a Vinland saga? It's the scene where Thorfinn's taken in by that family of the village is going to be pillaged. They oh, do... No, that's <laughs> in, that in the manga. Yeah, that's yeah no, no, I know it's in the yeah. manga, but the point I'm making is they make a point that they can't understand because he's talking, but in the anime they're both speaking Japanese. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think they should have... Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. they should have... The manga this is actually bad because in some... and some... some in some parts, they do actually write what they are saying in a language and have in brackets English. Yeah, yeah. yeah but obviously, um, uh, uh, but what I'm saying is for the anime, what they could have done is like they could have actually hired um, people who could. Uh, yeah, they actually, yeah. they, just, they didn't do, they didn't. Yeah, I just, that's true. I just found anime, it though. funny, just like, yeah, yeah, let that... me through. What language is he speaking? Yeah. But I don't we... know, I think it's Norse. Yeah. But, yeah. but we have, uh, but we have lots of other examples of that. We they had, um, I'm pretty sure we saw that anime where they had some Russian speaking. It, it's very few and far yeah, I, remember, I, remember in, I remember in Megalobox, they actually got uh, mm. an American voice actor for one of the characters. And they were very smart with um, Golden Camway to find people who actually did speak the Ainu yeah, language. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I, I think the entirety of the Vinland Saga season could have served as a flashback slash backstory for Thorfinn because he's going to become the protagonist. He he is the protagonist, sort of, but he's going to become the focus. Are yeah, you... I mean, there's a reason why they call this arc the prologue. It, yeah, yeah, that's it. Are, like, you, um, are, are, are you essentially, I'm, I'm going to get get this one, are you saying that you would prefer it if they did what they did with Berserk and had one full episode about... Uh, fourth in the future, and then we flash back to all this and made that the anime. To be honest, I know I don't know if that would be the case because uh, in because that bit that we got with in with Thorfinn in the manga uh, with was still part of the prologue. Meanwhile, with Guts, the Black Swordsman arc was very much was definitely after the Golden Age yeah. arc. So these are more adaptation things rather than anything. Else. Yeah, I'd say so. I think I think the anime actually did a really clever job with Vinland Saga mm. with saving that for yeah. later on rather yeah. than bringing Can, it back at the start. I'd also like to um at another point. Uh, what I don't see what the point was of having the flash forward segment at the end of Vinland Saga. I like flash that. forwards. Yeah, like do we see that thing where we see those uh, all those cat oh those characters all those yeah. characters. And I all think that it's set up for second season. Well, yeah, season two. Like set. it, we also got the same with Ahan's Ahan what what and I what the last season where we saw characters who we haven't seen in this season think oh they're gonna show up in the next yeah. season if they get one. I, I I like that personally. I think that's. A good I don't think that, I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, well I I find it quite funny though because they're gonna switch studios. That those characters are gonna look very different. One with purple hair, school girl, and that. Um, I, 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 I don't say I, I don't think it would have served well as a, as a flashback because I don't like the this is what the st- this is what Guts is going to turn into. Then let's flashback to his origins because yeah. we, we already know it's going to go to shit. Yeah, anyway. I do. Yeah. I do kind of agree that with the Berserk anime, they probably should have just stuck with the Golden Age arc. I agree because yeah. in the manga that makes sense because again that's kind of it. Built, it has more time with Guts at that point, mm. and then kind of goes back, because it obviously it tends to go I, forward after the Golden Age. I'm not sure 20 minutes is enough with Guts to really introduce that character like they did in the anime. I'm not sure yeah. there's enough time. Yeah, I again, the the manga does a much better job with it. it. Yeah, yeah, I was sort of playing off your point yeah. to that one. Yeah, the, I, I do think, like, either... They should have had a brief... I feel like they should have had... the. An episode like so, briefly telling his time with Gambino. I think like these two. Yeah. Are very, I feel like these yeah. two are very evenly matched in this category. Mm. I, I, Gam- Gambino's was very short. I felt. So. Can, yeah. Yeah. Considering the fact that we do have a lot more time with him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't understand much of what happened with it. I just saw that obviously he killed his surrogate mm. father character. Uh, and some kind yeah, of he. I, again, there's a. I'll, I'll go into it when we go after yeah, yeah. this point. I said I think pacing wise they're very similar to each other. They both got the same amount of episodes to yeah. tell their story. Yeah. Well, if anything, I think Vinland Saga takes it a lot slower than Berserk does. Y- yeah. Pace wise, for his story. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do agree, and I think I think it's kind of to his benefit as I well. Agree. As well, because because uh, I feel like Vinland Saga is a story that you kind of need to do a bit slowly. Meanwhile, I think, obviously with the anime of Berserk, I think they do the downfall of Griffiths a bit too quickly. Now, yeah, because it's only three, three, four episodes. Like, really yeah, before the... the I think it's like probably four or five mm. before the eclipse. Oh. Meanwhile, in the manga, mm. grand most of it is battles and is fighting, is fights, but mm. we do definitely see a lot more resistance you from got, the Midland Army trying to get um, them out. I was explaining to a non-anime watching friend about this, and I want to see if you guys agree with me on this one. Mm-hmm. I said, if you did this in like normal TV terms, this would be a fight between Game of Thrones and Vikings. Mm. Is that would you say that's an accurate comparison? Probably, I'd probably say Game of Thrones and The Last Kingdom. Well, also thought the Game of Thrones ended shitly. <laughs> yeah, it, it just, yeah, the the, the game, um, But I've heard a lot of people have said Berserk is the anime equivalent of Game of Thrones. Uh, I'd say after Golden Age, it will be more The Witcher. Yeah, mm. I think The Witcher is a better comparison. Yeah, so yeah. Th- though I guess seeing as we are talking about the Golden Age, arc, I would probably say. Uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Golden Age arc is very Game of Thrones. It's very much that idea yeah. of political power, political power, and what it means to rule the throne and succession, and what the the uh, what individual soldiers matter in the grand yeah. scheme of things. Yeah, I, I will say I was, I was quite jarred at times by Berserk's pacing because I think I think it, it extends out the fights, which is natural because you want to get all the cool animation in. But then it, it does kind of fast forward through some aspects of character um, enrichment and, mm. and backstory. You know, I really like the Gambino thing. And um... yeah, again, again, I feel like the, I feel like missing out the Gambino bit and like some of the actual character development stuff with guts 
is definitely was definitely a detriment to the anime. And and like the the one hundred man slaying bit was cut over t- was cut over two episodes. Of st- to, to in me. the I mean in the man in the manga it is a bit quick a lot like I think a good chunk of it because in the anime most of it I think was focused on Casca escaping. Meanwhile yeah, in, yeah. in the manga a good lot of it was on guts. Fighting, yeah. fighting yeah. the hundred men. Which yeah. were you guys um, disappointed by any aspect of the story structure with these two? Uh, well, I, I'll go first. But I will say the whole eclipse felt very rushed and out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does feel a bit ru- rushed ru- compared to how those like no real build up throughout the series yeah. for it. Yeah, the well, the eclipse. The most does of... come a little bit out of nowhere and nowhere in the manga, but there's like a bit more time. Yeah. To well, deve- to develop it, I guess, because we do obviously we do get sort of the hints to it that we get uh, the that Be- Behalet is protecting Griffith, and we do see a brief glimpse of the God Hand before the eclipse happens. And of course, there's anime. whereas in the anime, it's only really the pendant, mm-hmm. and of course, we have seen that flash that for, that um, we know what the world is going to end up like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the uh, the thing about it as well for me though is. Um, I was. I had a point here. I, I'll, I'll agree that um, I think Canute's. We, we touched on this before, but Canute's character development is very, very quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's not a pacing issue. That's yeah. that's a writing yeah, issue. I, I, the way you I clicked sp- there, I thought you were trying to hypnotise me. So also, yeah. when I click my fingers, you'll think you're a chicken you're or something. You're in the room. You're in the room. Yeah. And you're under. <laughs> you're look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, on. Yeah, look at my eyes. You're under. Huh? <laughs> um, Go on, Carl, try and click your fingers. I can't click my fingers. No, 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 it's impossible. Yeah, you're using the wrong ones to start yeah. with. Oh. Now, here's the thing. Put your, fi- your fingers down like that. Put your th- two fingers down like that. Get this, and then... See, the fact that you Reese can to... do it, and he's also dyspraxic, means yeah. that I'm you really need, bad. You need to try... You, what you need to I do... I can never get... You, 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 tr- you need to try and click your fingers on... Your other yeah. fingers, yeah, not it's, the. It's, it's this look, look, let's sense. let's move on. We got better things to do in our time. No, we don't. Tick, no. Welcome to the teaching cabin. How to do things episode. So <laughs> episode he's... one. Kick finger kicking. Join us next time where we will do whistling. <laughs> I can't <laughs> do that very well either. I can't do that. Oh, well, I'll never get a. Well, I'll never get a part in West Side Story. Just as <laughs> <laughs> when you're a jet. <laughs> um, the. Uh, I cannot believe that got nominated for best picture. Um, mm. The. I I I I'm 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 so conflicted on this. These are both really good in their stories. Yeah. I think we've got to vote. To be yeah. honest, I don't think there's any more we can do with it. So Reese, where's your vote going? I'll personally go berserk. Um, me? Uh, yeah. I'd say Benland Saga. I'm gonna. Well, the choice is gonna go to Elliot, but I I still get a vote. Um, I'm gonna go berserk. I think berserk sticks with me a lot more than Vinland does. Yeah. Berserk has a lot more memorable moments of the entire story. Elliot, Elliot you might sure find that? this tough to believe. I'm going to go with Vinland Saga. Whoa! Oh, oh, shit! Because, oh. again, I feel like Berserk skipped out a lot, which the anime skipped out a lot from the manga, which definitely hit the story structure a bit more. Meanwhile, Vinland Saga, it is a very, very good adaptation. What? And I say, like, all this, even all the stuff they added, it's added to the story. So I say Vinland Saga did the anime. Did I, the, I the, sense a fair better. justification. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so, so was, it, was it your knowledge of what the manga has and has to offer that kind of took away from that? From, yeah, from I say so. yeah, I say so. For example, in the bit where we see with Gambino, uh, we actually get kind of a scene that leads to later down the line. For example, like, he... Well, for start, when Gus was a kid, uh, Gambino sold him off to one of his troops, and you can guess okay. what happened. Uh, yeah, there's a running theme. What happened? <laughs> and so, during the sex scene with Casca, it's more drawn out in the manga. Okay. We get a very powerful moment with Gus where he gets PTSD, not only from that, because it's his first time he has sex since, but also from killing Gambino, from killing Gambino accidentally. And, like, we see a very vulnerable side of guts mm-hmm. that we just never have, and it's so, mm-hmm. it's legit really powerful and soul crushing moment. Or is that scene in the anime is more about Casca? That scene, about yeah, that scene in the anime is more about Casca, meanwhile, it's divided in, between in, the two. In, really in both longer. versions, actually, I'd say it's also in the Golden Age arc, it's more about Casca than it is about guts. Mm-hmm. I say, I say, in with that scene as a whole, it's, it's, it's equal between the two. Can I, do, can I just also add, fuck the Golden Age arc movies. I haven't seen them. Same, I've not. Oh, they are so bad. 
like, wow, you thought the cuts were weird in the anime. The cuts are yeah. fucking barbaric. Also, in one the... massive cut that I'm surprised by is the Skeleton Knight. There's actually a knight who runs into Guts af- not that long after he leaves the, after he leaves the, the Banner of the Hawk and essentially builds up on the prophecy that Zod the Immortal started mm-hmm. off mm-hmm. beforehand. And as it turns out, he's actually an antagonist of the Apostles. He's the reason, oh. he's the guy who gets Guts and, and Casca out of, out of the Eclipse. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I can hear something. Um, oh yeah, it's uh, the Fire Emblem staff ripping this off completely every t- in every bloody game. <laughs> <laughs> like, ser- like seriously, they skip out. Like seriously, his... He, we even get a fight between him and Zod the Immortal outside of the Eclipse. Oh, like, wow. that they, they skip. I'm so shocked they skipped him out because he, considering just how vital of a character he is, like in that second half. I just had a thought: Berserk Fire Emblem clone. Good luck with the Golden Age arc. The le, well, okay, so that's us for this this month. We, I, I cannot believe that villain won. I thought all the way here, Berserk was taking it. I, I mean, I mean. As I said, with when it comes to anime, villains are winner, manga, berserk. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, yeah, cultural impact of the show um, of, of berserk. It's impossible to deny yeah. that this show is just been incredible. Yeah, like yeah, like even I still like the anime. I still st- do still really like the anime. Oh, yes. It's just there's a reason why that even if it's just the best one, it's still not an it's still not a, an amazing adaptation of the manga. Seriously. Read the manga. Like, it is fantastic. Like, like with any comparison we do, they're both re- they're both really bloody high quality things. It's yeah. impossible to. I mean, we're choosing in specific mm-hmm. metrics, so they're both incredibly good. We should say that definitely. Yeah, oh yeah, these are yeah. incredible shows. I mean, we named Villain Saga Anime of the Year in 2019. I feel like Berserk is one of those quintessential 90s anime. You can't talk about anime in the 90s and not mention Berserk. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I mean, you can't really talk about even grimdark fantasy. Yeah, without yeah. Berserk, without at least mentioning Berserk. Absolutely. There's a reason why even non-anime fans like this thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. And you can see it in... You can see some of the influence all over the place. Like, you look at... Um, you have to look at Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Warhammer draws a lot of its fantasy influences from, uh, from Berserk. That's true. Um, I, uh, and I'm glad that Berserk will, at some point, it will get um, its ending. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, it, it yeah. Does... And it's just also can tell me you that you are severely missed. The manga world will never be the same without you. I agree. Agreed. And speaking of um, uh, tributes that we're going to be making, that leads us into what we're doing next month, which is we're going to be talking about our favorite things about Yu-Gi-Oh next mm-hmm. month yeah. after the death of Kazuki Takahashi. I felt we yeah. needed to do something about. Ta- I felt we, considering how much Yu-Gi-Oh played a part in all of us. I mean, I how? felt we need to go back to I it. How Yu-Gi-Oh pretty much shaped my fucking childhood. So, I don't think I've ever been hit by celebrity death as much as as uh, Kazuki did. So we're going to be talking about. Um, so we're going to talk about a bit about. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about season zero since yeah. that was the one that um, shaped season zero. Yeah, yeah, season zero. They briefly had an anime that was oh, a yes. complete adaptation of the manga. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was about my guy but had green hair. Uh, yeah, yeah, screw yeah. the rules. Oh, I screw have the rules. rules. I, I have green, green hair. hair. Is, is that why um, his brother in the filler had green hair also, or something? Yes, possibly. No, but we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about our uh, in each uh, in each season. We're going to talk about our favorite um, our favorite duels in each mm. season and what and we're gonna, and we are going to talk a, a bit about the ending. Of uh, uh, we're going to sort of talk about how the ending of Yu-Gi-Oh worked and why all the things that have followed it haven't worked. Yeah. But the main thing we're going to talk about the the actual ending or Dark Side Dimensions. Uh, both actually. We're going to revisit well, Dark Side Dimensions. Yeah, because hey! it's all in Dark Side Dimensions that follows the manga. It doesn't follow the anime. Yeah. yeah. But let, let's. Uh, but the thing is, we're going to talk. We're going to say for each season what our what well, Ren's going to be a bit. Uh, well, I, I, actually, I actually really here's something kind of fun I learned about Dark Side Dimensions. You know the scene where Yugi is so Yugi's new dual disc set thing. That was animated by Kazuki Takahashi himself. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, but the main the main subject of the next one is our favorite and least favorite duels from Yu Gi Oh. Uh, so I've only seen Duelist Kingdom arc. <laughs> so, so your favorite and least favorite are going to come from Duelist Kingdom. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, so that's fair. But it also it's it's mainly so we also had it was also because we wanted to have one so that we could concentrate on the summer season of anime. 
I yeah. am very, I am very behind. I spent the last two weeks doing nothing but binging *Pin the Saga* there's a, and *Berserk* sorry. and play and playing *Fire Emblem: Three Hopes*. I'll tell you right now, there's a vampire one on high. Dive. I know, but I know, I know the one you are on about. I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, yeah. Put it this way, I said this and said, if if Elliot isn't considering this for a wild card, I'll be amazed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it has Vampire in the Garden to compete with. Oh yeah, Vampire in the Garden. That was a rave of Vampire anime. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we'll see you next month for our best and worst Yu-Gi-Oh duels. Thank you very... Uh, and to pay tribute to one of our, fa our favourite manga creators. But thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see yeah. you next time, guys. Goodbye. See you next month. Bye.